There's a slight problem with the brakes on this old trailer. They don't exist, at least not anymore. The original brakes were non-serviceable. There's no parts available. The original parts are long gone. So we don't have much to work with, but I'll tell you a little secret. If you have a welder, there's no such thing as non-serviceable. These are clamp style or Dayton style wheels. 14.5 tires. Some people call these mobile home axles or house trailer axles. That's not necessarily true. A real mobile home axle is like 10 feet wide. These are, you know, these are only eight feet to the outside of the tires. They're for real equipment trailer axles just kind of an old school way to do it. These 14.5 tires, are, they're getting kind of hard to find, but they can hold a lot of weight. So these are eight by 14.5s. They're good for 3,100 pounds each. I know you can get nine by 14.5. I think you can also get 10 by 14.5. These are dust cap pliers. Snap on part number GCP10. Don't know if they still make these or not. These are pretty old. Handy little tool. Get our cotter pin pliers. And it shouldn't be tight. Bearings look good. Stub axle looks pretty decent. So that's all that's left of the original brakes. Not much. All right, here's the plan. We're gonna cut off this old non-serviceable backing plate. We'll clean up the axle tube and then we'll weld on We'll weld on this new flange. Is that not gonna be the right size? Oh, they're supposed to be three inch. Stand by. Yeah, that's a three inch axle tube. But uh, that ain't a three inch flange. Dang it. Yeah, the three inch axle flange has a two and three quarter inch bore. Son of a diddly. Well, whatever. We'll proceed with the plan as planned and we'll just, uh, we'll have to adapt as we go.
Okay, it fits. Fantastic. This is our new brake assembly. If you're watching this from outside the US, this is gonna seem like some kind of weird alien technology, but this is how we do it in the US. These are electric brakes. So it's a standard drum brake assembly with a lever, kind of like a parking brake lever, and attached to the lever is an electromagnet. The magnet is controlled by an electronic brake controller inside the towing vehicle. And today they, they use solid state accelerometers, but in the old days they had a pendulum. And when you push the brakes in the tow vehicle, it started to decelerate, the pendulum would swing forward and the pendulum was attached to a potentiometer or something and somehow the more it swung forward, the more current it would send out to the electromagnet. And the more current, the more it wants to attract to this flat surface on the inside of the brake drum. And then as it sticks to the drum, it pulls the lever forward, pushes the shoes out, and you get your braking. Yeah, I don't know, it's pretty complicated, but it works fine. And you know, it's ubiquitous here. They've been doing this since, I think since the 1950s. So, you know, pretty much every towing vehicle here is already set up with a brake controller. If you don't have one, it's pretty easy to install one. Yeah, okay, so the problem is we have to figure out how to align these brackets on the axle so that we can attach the backing plate in the right spot. So I've got the bearing put back in our hub. Just gonna drop this backing plate in here. And I gotta get the shoes kinda centered up here. Like so. All right, now drop this down in here. Okay, now we have to space it up just a little bit because we don't want the backing plate to rub against the brake drum. So I've got a stack of washers here. Just stick those in. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now, what we need is a measurement from the back of the flange here to the bearing. It appears to be right at two and a half inches. So the trick is we need to space this flange two and a half inches from this face and we have to somehow hold it mostly square. Now I was thinking about making a, a fixture with some kind of a V-block or maybe welding something together to slip over this shoulder, clamp onto the flange. But then I remembered that I have a 3D printer. And yeah, I just sketched up what I wanted and drew it up in Fusion 360, sliced it, put it on the 3D printer. It took about, honestly, it took about 10 minutes to sketch it, draw it, slice it, and set up the printer. And then it took about five hours to print this thing. But, I mean, who cares? You don't have to do anything. Once it starts printing, you just walk away. In fact, I let it print while I was sleeping. And uh, this should slip over the stub and fit right onto the flange, like so. Huh? Pretty cool. I'm getting a late start with 3D printing, but I really like it. Uh, when I was in college, back in the early 2000s, we had a 3D printer. And back then they weren't even called 3D printers, they were called stereo lithography machines. And they were fantastically expensive. We probably had one of maybe 10 in the state. And it couldn't even print anything useful. It could only print this, it was basically like starch and it would dissolve in water. And we used to use it for like testing airfoils and wind tunnels and stuff, or just making like foundry patterns. But I mean, they've come so far and the printers just keep getting cheaper and better quality. So yeah, if you're a person that likes to make things, 3D printing is fantastic. Anyway, 
fire up the welder and we'll tack that in place. Hopefully we can get all four of them tacked before our fixture starts to melt. Well, that's a fun little welding job. Confined space, out of position on a rusty axle tube. I chose to just burn them in with some 6011. The welds aren't super pretty, but we got good penetration. They're not going anywhere. It doesn't work. What a shock. Last time I used this, I got a comment that I should be stacking the bearings up to save time, but it doesn't work that way. So I packed that one just fine, but not the other one. So our little bangs, they don't take much grease. Okie doke. So I've cleaned up the inside of the drum the best I can. It's pretty pitted here where the magnet attaches, but I think it'll work just fine. So we've got our packed bearing and our seal installed. The seals, it's really just a dust shield. I mean, there's nothing, nothing very sealing about it. Let's see, I'll pull that back out. We did it wrong. We'll give this thing a nice liberal coating of grease. We'll put it back on. And we'll install our packed outer bearing. Oh, what a greasy, messy nightmare. And we need our washer, like so. And then the castle nut. Okay. Now we'll take our torque wrench. We'll tighten it down good and tight. And then we'll back it off. Just hand tighten it. We got a little, got to knock a little rust chunk off that drum. Yeah, hand tight only. I'm gonna have to back it off just a little bit to get that in. Use our torque hammer. Okay. 
Okay. There we go. I think that's some kind of a gate from when they they poured this in the foundry. There is a left and a right backing plate. The lever is on the opposite side. They do work in reverse, but they don't work as well. So we gotta adjust them. These are not self-adjusting. So we have to reach in from the back side and turn the star wheel. Always an adventure. And usually you end up turning it the wrong way the first time. Okay, so we're locked up. I'm gonna back off. A couple of clicks. That sounds pretty good. You want it to drag just a, just a little bit. It's not really dragging, it's just, you know, one of the shoes is, is touching the drum. That worked. If I didn't know any better, I would swear that somebody did that that knew how. It looks good. I'm happy with it. Unfortunately, we can't test them because I have to fix the wiring. And just a cursory glance, looks like that could be a whole video in and of itself. Yeah, we don't even have enough wires there to do it. So that's gonna be a project, but for now, I think we're gonna call it quits. Good thing my shirt has these extra holes in it because it is hot. That's it, servicing your non-serviceable brakes. It's not too bad as long as you have a welder and a lathe, a brake lathe, a 3D printer, a bunch of fancy measuring tools, a bearing packer. What could possibly go wrong? Like this? I'm sure they will.